So, for whatever reason, I've had shader image processing effects on the brain again recently, and by extension, how to implement something such as posterization shaders in Game Maker. So, if you've ever used something like Photoshop, I'm sure you probably had some exposure to something like a posterization filter before. Uh, posterization is all about reducing the number of colors in an image. It is color quantization. It is the sort of effect that can give an image a sort of uh, artistic, like, painterly look. If you've ever done tune shading, uh, posterization is similar overall to tune shading, but tune shading works by quantizing the, um, the lighting information in a scene rather than the color information itself. If you wanted to experiment on your own, you could perhaps achieve some interesting effects by taking some ideas from tune shading and some ideas from posterization shaders and mixing them together in different ways, but that's perhaps a little bit beyond the scope of these videos. Um, I'm going to use a different set of images um, for these next couple of videos on like artistic effects in Game Maker than I've been using before because uh, the picture of my rabbit is great and all, but I kind of would like something with a little bit more color in it for some of these videos. And um, note that I have not done any pre-processing these images. Uh, the camera on my phone is just bad. So if the original images look a little bit like smudgy, then that's why. Anyway. Uh, we are going to leave that. That is what we are going to have by the end of this video, and I'm going to jump into a uh, mostly empty test project called uh, the, well, Tutorial Shader Posterization. And um, let's see, I've implemented the little counter that's like posterization level up in the up in the top, but it doesn't do anything yet. We'll get to that at some point in this video. Uh, I'm going to talk about two methods of implementing a posterization effect in this video. Uh, one which you might have seen before, one which well, I guess you might have seen them both before, but I think the second one's a little bit less common. Anyway, so the uh, the main way that you'll see posterization implemented in a shader would be to uh, go into your fragment shader. Uh, you're going to sample from your uh, your texture, and you're going to um, effectively round the colors, round all of the levels of the colors, into a certain number of buckets. So. If I'm going to start off by saying, let's call it float, posterization level is like 10 or so, or let's go lower, let's make it 5. Uh, I'll make this a uniform in a minute. If you wanted to round all of the levels of the colors in your game to the nearest one-fifth, so that you effectively only have 5 different possible color values for red, green, and blue, uh, for a total of 15 possible, um, I guess really, at least the way I'm going to do it, it would be... Um, six possible levels for 18 possible colors in your image, the way that I'm going to do it, but no matter. Uh, so red, green, and blue are all going to range between zero and one when you sample them from this texture. Uh, a very easy way to round this to the nearest one-fifth would be to uh, multiply uh, the red, green, and blue colors by the posterization level by five. Uh, we could floor this, we could round this. Oh, uh, GLSL doesn't have a built-in round. All right, we'll floor this. Uh, and then that will round it down to the nearest integer, and then we could divide that by the posterization level again. Um, set that back to the original red, green, and blue. We're going to leave the alpha channel alone. Uh, feed that into the GL underscore frag color. And lo and behold, we are going to have a very easy way to reduce the number of possible colors in this image. Um, okay, so again, the fact that my uh, my phone camera is not that great makes it a little hard to see the difference between the original here. If I were to dial this down to like three or so, uh, you would see that there indeed has been a fair amount of uh, reducing the number of colors in this image. If you were to try to display this image on something like a very old computer monitor, which only supported like four bit color, it might come out looking something like this if you were to try to display this image on a like on a Game Boy screen, admittedly a very high resolution Game Boy screen, it might come out looking something like this. And then of course uh, we can um, we can make this a uniform instead. Uh, the uniform is going to be fed into the shader uh, when we draw this scene. Apparently it's not, so I'm going to have to do that. Uh, shader get uniform. What did I call it? I'm just going to copy and paste because I'm not going to spell that right 
three times in a row. Shader set uniform. And the uh, the uniform value can be that uh, that posterization level variable that I've got um, counting up and down when you hit a button. Okay. So that's this is a post <clears throat> this is posterization level four. We can reduce it. If we go really low, it's going to kind of stop having any meaning. Like the only colors that you, this looks amazing. Like the only colors that you can actually see are. Um, the color channels that are like all the way maxed out, 255 on red, green, or blue. Uh, very few colors. If I increase it, uh, we're going to have our color resolution coming back until it looks uh, pretty close to the original image. Again, notwithstanding for the fact that my phone camera is not very good. So this is a very basic way of doing posterization. And if you wanted to, this is again, fairly similar to tune shading. If you wanted to, um, make it even more similar to tune shading. You could, instead of doing this um, multiply, floor, and divide uh, calculation, you could use a ramp texture to figure out how different uh, color levels are going to be like mapped onto, uh, onto an output color. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to do something which I got from a... Um, I believe the guy's name is David Letier. He does... He runs the uh, 3D game shaders like blog website page thing. I'm pretty sure I've talked about that in videos in the past. Uh, he has a nice implementation of posterization, which I like a little bit more than this. And it's going to work by taking into account the brightness of each pixel, or at least like kind of the brightness of each pixel, into our um, into our posterization calculation. It's not going to be anything super complicated, don't worry. But first, let me uh, let me uncomment this, or no, I'm just going to comment out this line because that's the only one that actually got modified. Um, I'm going to, uh, first, I'm going to take the grayscale value, which isn't going to be like the luma or the average of the color channels or anything, but this is actually going to be the max of um, base.red and the max of base.green, base.blue. So whichever color channel has the highest value, uh, that is going to be our, um, what I'm going to call my grayscale value here. Um, I'm going to then do essentially this on the um, on the gray value on that that max color channel value but I'm going to actually do it twice one for the lower uh, bounds so that's gonna be uh, gray times posterization level and that's gonna be all rounded down divided by posterization level and one for the upper uh, bound which is going to be rounded up with the seal function. And having done that, let's go and um, calculate the uh, the distance of our grayscale value to our, our lower bound. So that's going to be gray minus lower. And likewise, uh, the distance of our grayscale value from our upper bound, which will be upper minus gray. Uh, you could toss an absolute value around these. Uh, David Letier does take the absolute value, but gray is always going to be higher than the lower bound, and upper is always going to be higher than the gray bound, the gray value, so there's not really any point. And uh, whichever one of these is closer to the actual uh, to the actual gray value is going to be what we're going to use for our calculations. So, um, uh, <laughs> off by one error on my hands on my keyboard. Uh, float level is going to be, I um, guess I'll initialize that to zero. If uh, lower diff is uh, less than or equal to upper diff level equals lower, else level equals upper. Uh, basic, uh, basic conditional in a shader. Uh, you could also write this in a single conditional operator. Uh, float level is going to equal lower diff uh, less than or equal to upper diff. Um, this expression, question mark, lower colon upper. Uh, I think that's a little bit more concise. I believe you can also uh, condense this into a step function, which will effectively do the same thing, but it doesn't matter. And lastly, our final adjustment value. 
uh, is going to equal that uh, that chosen level divided by the grayscale value. And this is going to be a little scale factor which we can multiply based on RGB by. So based on RGB times equals that. And we are on our way to having a posterization effect. Okay, uh, let's see. So again, if you dial the posterization level all the way down, it's going to kind of not really look like anything, so maybe don't do that. Uh, you can see that while the number of colors on our image are definitely reduced, um, it's not as easy as saying like there are a total of like four, four different colors in this image or a total of like 15 different colors in this image. You can definitely see on, for example, the water in the fountain in the middle of this image here that there is definitely a uh, fairly solid cutoff between the brighter um, the brighter colors and the the darker colors where the uh, where the sky is reflected versus where the sky is in shadow. Uh, but if you look at, for example, the coleus, the red coleus leaves in the corner of this image, there is still a little bit of a soft transition, and it's definitely not full color. But I do think it looks better than just the uh, the vanilla like rounding effect, the uh, the rounding calculation that we we were doing earlier. I guess I would sum this up by saying that uh, parts of the image that have high contrast, such as the water, or such as in the back over here, um, this uh, this this hedge, there's a hard cutoff. But within the uh, within the brighter parts, there's still a little bit more of a gradient. And I think, um, like generally speaking, if I wanted to drive the drive the like artistic point home uh, while still having the image being recognizable as what it's supposed to be, I think a posterization level of about four, maybe five, is generally pretty good, but that's, uh, that's a matter of personal taste. Uh, if I, uh, scroll through the other images here, we've got the shot inside the greenhouses, we've got the, uh, like, I'm looking at up, up top over here by the roof of the, uh, sunroom. Definitely some pretty high contrast up there, uh, whereas maybe down in the, in the grass in the middle of the square, there's a little bit more fine detail. Um, okay, maybe this one's just a bad image. For, uh, for illustrating this effect, because it's kind of all the same color anyway. Um, but yeah, that's posterization. So if you wanted to do a little bit more with this, to definitely play around with it. I believe if I were to drag this into like Photoshop or something and apply a posterization filter, there would be phot Photoshop would take the extra step of uh, applying a bit of edge detection. So around, um, all right, it took me a minute to find the image on my computer, but uh, if we were to take the greenhouse image uh, go filter, uh, filter gallery, and apply this posterization effect. Uh, Photoshop is making a bit of an effort to, um, like, identify edges in this image. I assume based on contrast. I don't know exactly how Photoshop is doing it here. Um, I'm not sure if I really want to take that step today. You, um, you definitely could. Anyway. So that's posterization. Uh, this is a fairly simple effect. It is very much an artistic effect. Definitely is not something that will find a use in every game. But if your game happens to need something like this, uh, definitely by all means go and toss in a posterization shader. If you want a link to the uh, the code that I adapted for this to make this work, I will have a, uh, a link to David Lettier's 3D game shaders for beginners um, blog post site thing down in the video description. Uh, if you want the code for this itself, uh, you can have a link to this GitHub repository also down in the video description. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering where these images are from, uh, these are uh, Longwood Gardens in, I believe, uh, Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. It's where these pictures were taken, so definitely worth a day trip if you happen to live around there. I went last summer for the first time in like 20 years. It was, it was a fun time. Anyway, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game, currently a uh, 3D Zelda-like wizard game. So if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. And if you felt like contributing, I definitely would appreciate it. Uh, go Wishlist Wizard Ducks, which is the game that I work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to that Steam page can be found down in the video description as well. I hope you all found this interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.